give us a you know overall feeling about the whole experience that you had over there. Yeah, I mean, um, there was definitely a lot of emotions in Tokyo. I mean, you go from being super excited that you're heading there, and then you have like your realization moments, like at opening ceremonies, and then you have you know the nerves start coming in, and um, yeah, it's it's honestly it was a crazy experience. Three weeks of a lot of ups and downs and emotions, and yeah, it was it was incredible. What was it like with just you know no fans and stuff like that? Was that was that hard? Is it um, hard to get to compete? You think? No, I think it's okay, f especially for me, because I grew up in a club where I was typically one of the only ones at nationals. Um, so I went to those bigger meets where I didn't really have like a cheering section. Um, but we actually had our teammates. They were able to stay and watch. So um, that at least was good. Um, we had all the divers in the stands. Um, but yeah, I think not having fans changed the way the competition went for sure. I think it definitely has an effect on how we dive. Um, in, term, in terms of adrenaline. Um, sometimes when there's no fans, that, that adrenaline isn't there. So Joanne, you uh, mentioned that you were one of the only ones at nationals. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you scored the most points ever in a high school meet, over 500 points. I don't think everyone's ever going to meet, meet that. But it seems every year there's less and less um, com competitors in diving. Is that a concern? Um, I don't think so. I think um, nationally there's tons of um, young ones coming up that are going to be right up there with us. Um, my oh, events, in Tucson. oh, in Tucson. Um, well, what's unfortunate right now is our, our pool doesn't have a club, so I know that's kind of been hard as a lot of our um, club kids that are still diving, um, they're all heading off to college, and so um, hopefully we can get a club up and running soon to get some divers coming in. What was that emotion like when you got the silver medal and it was, you know, you got placed over your head and just the feeling that comes with knowing you've got that medal around your neck? Yeah, I mean, it was a little different this year because we had to put the medals on ourselves. Um, typically, they put them on for you. Um, but me and Jess got to put each other's medals on. So that was pretty special to share that with her. Um, but, I mean, it was crazy. Obviously, this thing has some weight to it. So I was pretty shocked when they put it on. I was like, whoa, <laughs> it's very heavy. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was... A lot of shock. I feel like still it's not really fully sunk in that I won a silver medal. Walk us through the first competition and just your, you know, your leading up to that. You know, mm -hmm. your thoughts and nervousness. Uh, like you said, adrenaline. What yeah. was going through your head as you were getting ready to compete for the first time? Yeah, I mean, I actually had some rough practices the last two 10 meter days that we did um, before my synchro event. So I was pretty nervous going into it, but. Um, me and Jess both woke up that day before synchro, and like, I don't know what it was, but it just like everything felt right. Like it, we just felt good. We felt ready. I mean, it was just we felt like something was gonna happen. It was just like we really. It was it was bizarre in a way. <laughs> like we're you know it was the only day it rained that day, and we're like oh wow like is this good luck rain? And next thing you know we're standing on the silver or in, on the podium and. Um, yeah, I think it was just we, we went into that competition very relaxed, and I think that made a difference. What about the, the, your individual performance? Yeah, um, you know, I had seven days between my events, so that was kind of hard um, waiting around seven days. Um, we were still training, but it was still a long time to, you know, come off a high and then try and go back down and then come up again, so that was pretty hard. Um, but. I felt ready. I mean, obviously winning a silver medal in synchro gave me a lot of confidence that I think was lacking before synchro. So I think going into individual knowing, okay, like this is kind of just a bonus round now. Like we can just aim for another medal here. Um, that definitely helped me a lot. During those days off, those seven days off when you were training, or were you at like a different pool in the area or were you at the same one that you were competing at? Um, this year, no, we couldn't really leave once we were in. Um, but once we were in the village, um, but typically what we would do for an Olympic team is we'd go, we'd be gone for about a month and we usually leave the village for um, a training camp in a different location and come back, but this time we couldn't. So I think that's what made those seven days so hard is, you know, I'm stuck three weeks with the same white walls and the same pool and the same dining hall and you're not really getting a change of environment for three entire weeks and that was pretty tough. Was part of the toughness the time change? I know when we were messing each other, it seemed like you were a day ahead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, 
I honestly, I think it's not too bad to adjust to the time there. Um, it's usually harder coming back. Um, you know, you're flipping your days in like completely in half, you know, all the way upside down. So, um, but no, I think it's, you really just have to learn how to manage it on the flights. Um, that's your time to either sleep or try and stay awake if you have to and try and match the time zone. Um, so you're typically pulling a 36 hour day when it comes to travel. So the commentators spend a lot of time talking about no splash and the Chinese practice that. What's the science behind that? Can, can you describe yeah. that? Yeah, so when we hit the water, we grab like this. So you have your hands up like this and you hit with a flat hand. Um, and then what you do when you're underwater, you kind of pull your hands down and that kind of creates like a hole and you try and pull your body through the hole. So we do this thing called a pike save. Um, and China is just really mastered that. I mean, also being small helps a lot too. <laughs> um, you know, you have less to go through the water, less room for a splash. Because what happens is if you hit one of the walls that from the hole you create, that's where the splash comes from. So, um, yeah. Right. What was it like? I mean, obviously there was no fans there. What was it like when you got back home to see people? Um, I had a whole crew that I guess showed up at the airport, so that was really cool. Um, you know, I had my old gymnastics coaches, some of the uh, young girls who train the, at that gym now, um, some teammates, family, friends. Um, Dwight's fiance, my coach's fiance, was there. Um, yeah, I mean, it was really cool having all those <laughs> people to welcome me home. I was really tired, but um, it was really nice. Um, it's been good, though, because I went on a vacation, and I've had some time to just kind of calm down and let everything kind of be um, relaxed for a little bit. On that vacation, did you decide where you were going to keep your medal? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm definitely going to keep it somewhere safe. Not, I'm not going to display it because people have asked me, like, are you going to display it somewhere? Like, no, <laughs> definitely not. So uh, we'll probably have it in a safe somewhere. Or, yeah. And when, when you're competing, and I, I use the golf analogy, like golfers, some golfers look at the scoreboard, some don't. You know, what, what do you do? And yeah. then, and also, do you watch the other divers? Or where are you when others are diving? Typically, I don't like to watch the other divers. Um, I try to avoid that because especially, you know, if they're diving well or they're diving bad, you start thinking, okay, well, this is my opportunity. Or you start thinking, well, shoot, now I can't catch this person. So it's just, it definitely adds another factor that you shouldn't add. Um, it definitely makes things harder. So I try not to, but in the synchro event, it was just the eight teams. So um, it, it was hard because we didn't have time to go sit down and you know take get some water and relax for a bit. We had to be, pretty much get back up on the platform and go again. So when you're waiting on the platform, you kind of see the other divers go. Um, so it's kind of hard not to look at the scoreboard in a way, just because I especially in synchro knew where we were. I saw, you know, Canada missed a dive. I saw Malaysia missed a dive, and that's kind of where I was like, all right, like this is our opportunity, and um, you hear the scores too, so that doesn't really help. But yeah. Well, in, in the individual competition, I mean, you were in, you were, you know, yeah, up there for quite a while. And right. then the Last couple of dives, but do you pay attention? Are you paying attention to the scores at that point? Um, no, I think it was kind of hard though, because I went in semis, I was or prelims, I was third, and then semis, I was third. So like, being third twice in a row, like obviously that's like, all right, like I can be on the podium, and I think that's what made the finals a little harder for me was that I was I was third, and then I was third again. So it's like, well now I have to keep that instead of like trying to work my way up there. So and I've always said that I do better when I have to chase. Mm -hmm. So um, not being someone that was chasing, it was. A little tougher for me, but um, that's something I have to learn how to how to do, deal with. During non-competition days, were you allowed to go watch other Olympic events? Unfortunately, no. Um, we could watch swimming because it was at our um, venue, but we couldn't watch anything else. Um, I guess some athletes tried to go watch gymnastics, and they were stuck there for hours because they they weren't letting them back on the bus. So um, yeah, no, we weren't allowed to because COVID. But typically, we can. Got to see some of the swimming events then. Which ones do you remember, you know, seeing and some of those performances? Yeah, I personally didn't go because I still had to compete. Um, but a lot of my teammates went when they were finished. They went and watched some of the swimming. 
Um, but we also had a team room in the village that I would go and watch in there. So um, I watched some of the relays. I watched my sinker partner's roommate win her medal and um, Reagan Smith swimming and Caleb Dressel and all of them. So it was pretty cool. So you had to leave two, within two days or something? Yeah, it was 48 hours within your competition. So you had to miss the closing ceremonies. And is yeah. that something you're looking forward to then, the whole? Um, I know typically we stay for the whole thing. Um, but honestly, when you're sitting in the same buildings for three weeks, I was pretty ready to come home. <laughs> um, opening ceremonies was super cool. So that we got that experience. So I wasn't too concerned with missing it. Wide open, you can see yeah, the that's the hope. Yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> so what's your calendar for now until, you know, the next one? What, you know, what kind of competition? Do yeah, you know? um, mostly college, because um, I still have two years of eligibility, so I'll be competing through college. Um, I'm also in grad school, so I have to deal with that. And then um, there will be some international competitions here and there, so we'll have, like, world championships and um, all our qualifiers to earn the Olympic spots again. And, um, yeah, so we're, we're definitely going to be having a lot of competition coming up. How long do you think you can compete? Oh, well, <laughs> well, um, Probably till 2024. Um, 2028 is, or yeah, it's it's a long time away. <laughs> so I, I'm like already like, wow, like that's really long. But um, I probably won't stay around that long, um, given that I'm in grad school and I'll have um, fellowships and stuff I'll have to do after. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm looking forward to the next steps after diving. During all this, do you ever think back to, you know, your days here and your four years old, six years old, and all, I mean, did all that come to you as you were going through that, or were you just zeroed in on, on competing? Um, like you mean? I mean, you think about the, everything that you had to do to get to where you were. Oh, right? yeah, I mean, um, obviously you don't expect some of it, like a lot of the emotions that come with it and a lot of the stress that comes with it. Um, it's not really stuff you think about at 10 years old. You just think about, you know, I'm here having fun at practice, <laughs> you know, hanging out with your friends and stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean, I when, as soon as I started diving, I was told by my coach that I had the potential to go to the Olympics. And so that was kind of like, in a way, like, wow, like I'm pretty good at this sport. I think I can go really far. And um, winning my first na national title at juniors, um, that obviously was another, like, kind of like, wow, like, you know, we're – we're going places in this sport, so we're going to stick with it. And um, that's when I started taking it really serious was when I went to my first international competition um, in Colombia. Um, that, that was when I was like, okay, like I'm representing my country now, so like now we're going to really take this serious and try and um, go far. Mm -hmm. So you're sitting in, as you said, with seven days in a room and nowhere to go, nothing to do. Were you thinking back to all of that as you or were you trying to keep away from that? No, uh, yeah, I definitely thought a lot about that. Um, it was really cool. I actually, when we arrived in the village, um, the USOPC set up this thing where they could mail letters to the training center, and then they took them with and put the le like the mail in our rooms. So I actually had letters from family and stuff, so that was really cool. I actually hung them all on my wall so that I could read them and look at them and just kind of remember, like, you know, I'm doing this work because I enjoy it, not because it's a job. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, I look back all the time, like when I was little, you know, enjoying the sport, just having fun, letting it, you know, just hanging out with my friends and enjoying the thrill, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Any more questions we want to ask? I just have a couple quick questions from uh, Dana Kelly and KBOA. Um, what do you think the Chinese are doing to develop such incredible teenage di divers, <laughs> like you were saying earlier? Yeah, I think they just start them really young. Um, you know, in the U.S., it's we pretty much choose a sport um, and we can start whenever we want. Um, but in China, like, they don't necessarily have that option, I guess. Um, you know, they start really, really, really young. I mean, th those girls are up on 10 meter before they're 12 and we're learning our first dives at 12. So, um, yeah, I think it's just because they start so young and um, they have them training at this, that, this high level, competing at this high level at 14. Last question is, is there anything here in the States you think we could change to catch up with them to be, you know, gold medal contenders every Olympics? You know, I think, honestly, that's a tough question because I think we're honestly heading in a good spot right now. I mean, we just had one of the best performances we've had ever at an Olympics for diving. And so 
that says a lot with where we're going. Um, I think it's just it's taking us a little longer to get there. I don't think there's one right way to do it. Um, I think we just do it very different from China. Um, and it's just a matter of learning from them and learning their technique and trying to figure out what we can do. I mean, the one thing I think that we have on them is, you know, we we do the sport more because we love it. It's not really like our job. It's more because we love the sport. And so I think that adds a different aspect that you don't really get from the Chinese side. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, congratulations. Thank you.